Hello and welcome to the print page turner. We have with us today Neeraj Kumar. Mr. Kumar has been former Delhi Police Commissioner and head of BCCI's anti-corruption unit. He is out with his new book, A Cop in Cricket, and we are here to talk about it. Welcome, Mr. Kumar. Welcome to the print. Thank you. So, my very first question: It's been nearly five years uh, since uh, your job as uh, the chief of uh, anti-corruption unit of the BCCI ended. Uh, how do you explain the timing of this book? Why now? It's not uh, nothing in particular. I wrote it during the COVID. <clears throat> it just took some time to get published. There is no such thing about timing. Okay, if we then uh, go into the intent of it, uh, would it be correct to say, had it not been COVID, uh, it would have come sooner? Uh, maybe. Maybe it would have been sooner, but uh, COVID kind of gave me the time to write it. Yes. But uh, why did you uh, thought it's important for people to know about it? For various reasons. First of all, our country um, adores the game of cricket. Uh, we, for us, it is uh, religion. It's a cliche, but uh, so it is, and. Uh, we should know what is the semi side of cricket. Uh, we know about match fixing. We know about spot fixing, given the police cases in the past. <clears throat> but uh, there is much more to it than just match fixing and spot fixing. And uh, my stint in the anti-corruption unit of the BCCI uh, led me to realize that the entire ecosystem in which uh, the corruption thrives in uh, cricket is uh, far beyond what uh, we Indians imagine it to be. And you thought uh, the previous uh, press reporting around it uh, wasn't enough for people to know what was happening? Yes, because so many things uh, you know people don't write about. For instance, private leagues, nobody uh, writes about. Nobody writes about the uh, fact that Police cases fail because there is no legislation in our country to deal with things like match fixing, spot fixing, you know, and so on and so forth. I was uh, going through a chapter in the book uh, where you say, and I quote you, it would be foolish to think everything is all right with the game and we can lower our guard. So I, I want to know. This has something that has got immediate, this to me it looked like it has an immediate context to it. Uh, when you say that today to think that everything is fine, hunky-dory and uh, remain under that assumption uh, would be foolish. What makes you say that in 2023? See, what amazes me is that post-2013 uh, spot fixing case and uh, af you know after the appointment of the Loda committee, preceded by the Mudgal committee, and you know, entire set of cricket administrators being sacked on the orders of the court. Uh, you know, the cricket uh, administration, the cricket establishment, would wake up to the requirement of a certain regime, anti-corruption regime, that should be put in place. But to my horror, I discovered that it had made no impression and it has made no impression till date. Mm -hmm. Even if we talk about this thing on uh, Chetan Sharma, which came out only a few days back. Right. You know, we don't learn lessons from uh, history at all. Cricket is so dear to us, shouldn't we sit together and decide and discuss what measures need to be put in place in an institutional sort of uh, way so that uh, corruption doesn't get repeated. So, uh, but uh, do you not uh, uh, see it or do you not think that uh, when money gets involved in any sport, uh, corruption is inevitable? No, it is not so. It, it is and, not. and what are the learnings uh, uh, which you think could be, we import a lot of things uh, from the West. What are the learnings do you think uh, we could have imported to uh, keep it a fair play? 
very simple something like uh, laws you know there are anti corruption laws in new zealand in australia in south africa uh, zimbabwe we don't have any uh, anti corruption laws it's a very simple thing to borrow from outside and why should we borrow from out, outside we, there is no other country which uh, patronizes cricket the way we do right we should set the example we should set the bar which for others to follow but unfortunately we have not and nobody has the time to even think about it and uh, given loda committee in supreme court uh, you know orders and this and that and so much up, up, upheaval that took place in the cricket establishment surely we should have learnt our lessons but uh, we haven't but uh, you also uh, in that uh, the 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 framework of law that you talk talk about you also sort of suggest uh, who can bring it and how it can be brought and you you actually name it uh, you say uh, the present dispensation at bcci is ideally suited to be that lobby which pushes for the sports integrity bill also the prevention of sporting fraud legislation if that is the case if bcci is the perfect lobby for that law uh, which is in a way pending or has never been you know sort of brought out from in the the dust removed from it why why do you think because you were at the helm of you know those things things were happening between 15 2015 and 2018 you were right there uh, and you have seen bcci inside out what do you think uh, is stopping bcci from doing that i wish i knew i don't because uh, having spent 3 years there and having uh, run the anti corruption unit of the bcci uh, what i saw really startled me really shocked me the utter indifference of the people there to what was going on I just not bothered nobody ever asked me that uh, what is the overall corruption scene in cricket in india what is all going on they never asked me even when we did operations like the disruption of the rajputana premier league like the busting of a uh, you know uh, pitch doctoring uh, scam in uh, kanpur right uh, arrest of uh, you know corn men and scamsters like uh, vijay barhate and uh, ravindra dandiwal and so on and so forth nobody ever said well what was this what is it that happened what are the lessons to be learned what do you think we should do in for future no not even one discussion in 3 years not one word of appreciation not even once was i asked that why is not this been done or that been done but that that's that's uh, in a way for me that's a, that's one side of uh, of of the coin uh, because uh, you were also at the helm of uh, of of the of when, when india was cracking down on uh, on on the spot fixing uh, case that's 2013 so you it's not that you were totally unaware of the functionings uh, of or the tentacles that go through in and out of different organizations uh, so when you took up that job in, in if i'm if i'm if i'm not wrong in 2015 around 2015 you must have been aware of what was coming or were you ca- caught off guard like it happens in cricket no i was i was aware that uh, well uh, I'm, i thought i'm required there i thought the bcci needs me there given my past experience right my experience of dealing with uh, mohammad azuruddin matter uh, the spot fixing case uh, some scotland yard investigations carried out in india um, uh, the hansi cronier case and so on so i uh, was uh, hoping that they would welcome me with open arms and use my expertise and my past experience to put in place a good anti corruption regime uh, 
in the organization and in the cricket establishment all over the country but there was no such interest and that is my greatest uh, lament and regret uh, of my tenure uh, when you were uh, the uh, helming that uh, unit the anti corruption unit of the bcci around that's around the same time when uh, a lot of reforms were happening in, in indian cricket especially bcci after the lodha committee recommendations uh, the committee of administrators were there uh, and uh, it was being headed by vinod rai in one of your uh, chapters you 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 seem uh, suspicious of vinod rai if 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 i can uh, word use the word suspicious and you say uh, and, and 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 he was the in a way for for a lot of people especially fans out there he he was the face of the reform of that that was happening that happened over a period of 3 years do you think he was not the right pick not the right man uh, to have been given the job of reforming indian cricket of cleaning most up most certainly so most certainly so and uh, would you uh, tell our uh, viewers why i give you an example you see he belongs to the indian administrative service he very well knew that i exist in the bcci he has dealt with the indian police service throughout his career now should he not have at least talked to me once that uh, you know neeraj what do you have to say about all this that is going on what do you think we should do together to put things in place but there was no, never such an occasion so that is what astounded me the most not because i am talking about myself as an individual but here was a golden opportunity for synergy to happen and for the improvement of uh, the fight against corruption in cricket but no such thing happened would it be correct to say that uh, uh, that i mean the way you see it uh, uh, mr rai sort of failed an opportunity failed the fans most certainly so also uh, because uh, you we also say that uh, there was scarcity of resources uh, when it came to you know cracking down on uh, on on these uh, seemingly corrupted uh, things happening in uh, the cricketing circles even local or or national internationals you say you had a meager staff of three or four people something three people, like that including me there were three including me so uh, this is again i'm sort of going back uh, because before you signed up for this uh, for this uh, you know clean up act uh, uh, edon that had did you uh, not inquire on your own uh, um, about the kind of infrastructure that was going to be given to you see i was not told that you are we are taking you as for clean up act please understand okay they told me that we are taking you frankly i didn't know what awaited me you know right but having joined i saw there were only two people there were a fairly good uh, well appointed office you know there was uh, but uh, when i asked for more hands when i tried to project that the task at hand was uh, much bigger and much huger uh and which i should be given more people and you know it didn't make any impression on anyone right you know administrators came and left you know even supreme court appointed uh, committee of administrators came nobody ever bothered they uh, lost sight of the fact that why they were there in the first place the entire supreme court order came in the wake of the spot fixing case right so they forgot their own raison d'etre the very reason for their existence and uh, they did nothing that is a sad part of it right uh, you seem to be a, a big fan of the game uh, you mention uh, for the first time when you witnessed a test match in kolkata and then calcutta um, between india and west indies uh, you talk about the players and, and it's a 
to me it gave a sense that uh, you have you you were uh, like millions of others you were also enchanted by the game and uh, i'm sure you carried it over the years uh, despite being in other duties uh, as the top cop and and then other important positions but does cricket today uh, do you think what do you think what a, what does a fan inside you think does cricket today need a cop and if yes what would be the definition of that cop most certainly it does and it does have a cop in fact uh, a cop the cop uh, there who is mr shabir khandawa wala uh, three years my senior in service uh, he has more hands as i have written in the book after i had left uh, the bcci uh, most of my recommendations and proposals were uh, accepted and implemented as if they were waiting for me to leave and then they you know implemented whatever i had uh, recommended uh, so he has a, a bigger uh, you know setup and more uh, hands on the deck so the cop has to do a lot the cop has his task cut out and all that uh, what his tasks are i have listed in the book what all has to be done so the cop can make a sizable contribution provided he has audience with the top bosses and the top bosses are amenable to his advice they are prepared to listen with uh, you know uh, an open mind what he has to say and uh, sky is the limit right. sky is the limit and the act could be kind of uh, put together at any stage of uh, time we can put our act together even now even in the next 6 months right why not so uh the cop has a lot to contribute but you say that uh, things are changing in the anti corruption unit at bcci there is probably more workforce uh, things that you uh, suggested uh, which were not implemented they have now now slowly finding some some space but are you satisfied with the pace no just having or do you think do you still think that it's some sort of a safety valve no just having more hands on the deck doesn't mean that <clears throat> the reform has happened you know it doesn't mean at all uh, those hands have to be utilized in a very channelized and focused kind of way and uh, uh, perhaps some uh, ideas that uh, i have that i have pro- projected in the book right could be um, you know uh, implemented by my successors well that's that's i can say uh, that's being hopeful uh, for the fans for the game uh, that we all all love in this country uh, one final question before i let you go sir um, uh, uh, your previous work has uh, found uh, space on uh, the ott apps in uh, form of daily crimes uh, do you uh, see this one also finding space uh, for it to reach large audiences uh, are there talks happening if you could tell something about it yes there are talks happening may not be necessarily based on this book right. but uh, on corruption in cricket in general the, there is something in the pipeline oh, all right and, and and how how have you uh, responded to the on screen representation of uh, the facts that you have lived by uh, because as a cop facts are very important uh, to you i'm sure they are very dear to you also as a form of as form of cop but i think Uh, when it uh, goes on screen big screen there are compulsions uh, there is an entertainment quotient that is there uh, do you think your previous works uh, on screen representation has been justified and um, uh, and how do you see this one uh, going ahead would it be some sort of a documentary or uh, would it be some drama some sort of a no, drama no it will be a docu drama okay uh, some somewhere in between a documentary and drama so some things will be fictionalized some ideas taken uh, for instance you know elements of the private fixing may be taken and it might show that uh, uh, budding cricketers career was cut short or finished because of this corruption 
and how crestfallen he is and so on and so forth. So certain ideas will be taken from the book from here and there and it will be pieced into a, a dramatic uh, telling of the whole story. Well, I'm sure that's something that uh, all of us would uh, like to see uh, uh, soon and, and of course it will go through your hard lens. Uh, with that, we come to the end of this interview. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you for talking to the print. Thank you, Anurag. Thank you.